We, we say it here over and over and over, life is better together. And I know for some, it may be hard, it may be awkward, but we encourage you, go visit a life group. You don't have to commit the first week. Like, it's okay, just don't show up and go to another one. Nobody's going to feel offended. No one will. They'll just move on because there's people going, and each and every single one of you are different. So we all have different needs. So I'm excited because we have so many um, life groups going on. I'm excited because we have quite a few young adults life groups. That's 18 to 28. Come on, give it up for our young adults. I am super excited for that. So I really believe that there's a place for every single one of you. And if there isn't, then maybe God's calling you to lead a life group and go ahead and take that challenge and that call. But overall, life groups are awesome. You get to meet people. You get to connect. And we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit more about it. But it's just so, so important to connect. So why don't you look to the person next to you and say, are you ready for God's word? Look for your second choice, the person you didn't think about first, and tell them the same thing as well. For those of you watching online, we want to say welcome. You can also register for your life group. Uh, I believe we have a few online life groups, so you can go ahead and look for that at our church center app and get connected. And you guys had a good week, church. Yes, yes. We just, uh, obviously, it's the month of February, so it's really big, Valentine's Day. Anybody enjoy their Valentine's Day? Oh, some of you did, some of you didn't. It's okay. It's okay. Valentine's Day, it's you know, some people go really all out. Like, there's some of you guys where I saw your social media, and like, man, you got, like, 200 roses. Like, you're making everyone else look bad. And I'm like, slow down, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you're going too hard. Especially those that are first dating, right? They're just bringing everything. everything they, they get everything. It's awesome. Continue to love people. Don't, don't do it. Don't. But everyone does it different, right? I, I think in our household, the Martinez household, we, we like Valentine's Day, but it's not like, whoa. And I'm not going to be cheesy and say, but it's about the other days, right? It's... I, we want to love each other on that day. But for us, it's cool. My wife and I aren't really big on, like, candies or nothing like that. But one thing we do want to do on Valentine's Day um, is we like to eat. So we're going to go somewhere good to eat this year. Um, she, she hypes me up. My wife is my biggest hype man. And she says, like, we can, yeah, yes, give it up for her. She's awesome. Um, I'm going to make her stand up and say, no, I'm not, I'm not. But, but she always tells me, hey, where do you want to go? Get? You want to go get a steak? She's like, no, the best steak is the one you make. I don't know if she's lying, but I'm going to take it. You know what I mean? I'm going to take it. And I got it over Sorella's and all these places. So it's easier because it's also less expensive. So it makes it easier, right? I don't have to pay $100 for a steak. But that's what we do. And, and obviously, we have two children, you know, Jeremiah and Grace. And this year, we wanted to give them. They're getting older. Grace is in TK. So she's finally around other friends. They're giving each other Valentine's Day cards. I'm reading through every single one, making sure nobody tries to get too crazy. But Jeremiah, we got him like a, a little bucket of sports, and we just filled it up with some candy. Horrible parenting. Yes, yes, I know. But we filled it up. I think we have a picture of them. Uh, maybe not. But we got him a, a, just a, a little bucket of, of toys and, and some candy. Uh, Grace, we got, I got her some flowers and, and a chocolate. Um, I really wanted you guys to see the pictures because it was pretty funny, and not because I want to show off my kids, but it's just good. But everyone does it different, right? Love, it's in the air. Love isn't there. For some of you guys, you guys may have, there it is. There's my baby girl, Grace. Peep out the shirt, though. That's what broke my heart right there. Here for dad's hugs. Woo, I wanted to cry when I saw that right away. But everyone does it different. We, I, I want to show my daughter that I love her, obviously, the same way I love her mother. And, and we're engaging, and everyone does it different. But we're focusing on love. And it's still the month of February, so we just thought as we're transitioning into a new sermon series entitled Uncommon. And one thing I love is that God's love is uncommon. It's not the same as, as, as the way we see love at times. Obviously, his love is far greater. And we sing songs like, you know, reckless love, right? Even some people get mad at theology, like, God's not reckless. Like, I, I get it. Slow down. But, but when you compare it to us, it may be reckless. We, we don't understand that, right? Anybody, anybody watch NASCAR? No. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So NASCAR drivers, right, for us, the speed limit here in California is about 70, 65. Anything over than that, it is reckless. You shouldn't be driving over 100, right? 90, all right, we can get away with it. But anything over 100 is reckless to most of us. Did you know a NASCAR goes as fast as 325 miles an hour? If we see that, we're like, that is reckless. 
You are not, that's not common, right? But to them, they're in their space. They know what they're doing. So for us, as we sing songs like reckless love, to us it may be reckless, but to God, it is a common love that he offers. We don't understand it, but all we have to do is just accept it. Amen, church? So we want to focus on uncommon love, something that's not the same, something that we don't expect. And one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and maybe some of you know it, is, is in John 3.16. We want to call this the, principle, the 3.16 principle. And you can find it in John 3.16. For those of you who have your notes, we're going to be going through our notes. Hopefully you had it there. If not, you can check us out on our Church Center app. Uh, but we encourage you to take notes uh, right there where you're at. But John 3.16, come on, church, we're going to read it together today. We're going to get some Bible uh, Sunday school going on. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I know many times when, when, we, when we see God or we, we think of these um, so-called other people have gods, but they think of, uh, of, of the, the higher beings. But to us, we hear God and we come and we lift our hands and, and we sing songs to him and we're worshiping him and we're giving him our all. And if this is your first time here, you may look at us and be like, man, that's a little weird. And that's okay. You don't get it yet. And hopefully you will. But we're here and we're saying, God, we give you everything. We give you our finances. We give you our hearts. And it can sound like, man, all, do, all God does is just receive. Maybe you've thought that. Maybe you haven't. But this proves to us that God is a God who gives. Before anything else, don't, and he gave you his all, his one and only son. Our God is generous. Our God is giving. Our God gives. And it's so awesome that he would do that. And I want you guys to understand that at this verse is, is, is just powerful. We could spend so much time just breaking it down and seeing how much God gives. And, and he loved us that he gave first. In order for us to understand God's love, to be able to teach it, is we have to know it so we can express it. In order for you to express God's love to people, you have to know it for yourself. And I don't know where you're at in life today, church, wherever you're at, if this is your first time or your 50th time, but we are all in different seasons, and that's okay. We're all on a different journey pursuing God. And I think with time, he'll begin to develop certain characteristics. But I, there was a few things we wrote down as a pastoral staff, and we thought this is really well known to know God, of what God's love is. So if you have notes, you can fill it in right there. If you have your, your cell phone, you can write some notes as well. If you just brought a notepad, that's awesome as well. But here we go. You guys want to know what God's love is. The first thing is God's love is unconditional. That's off the bat uncommon. It's unconditional. There's no terms. There's no regulations. You don't have to sign a contract to say, in order for you to get my love, you have to accomplish these things. God is saying, I'm giving it to you. And for some of us, it's hard. We, we still don't fully understand that, right? Man, but I got to get things going well first. Then I'll come to God. Many people don't come to church because like, I'm not living right. Now. Let me get right first, and then I'll come to God. Anybody hear that before? As you're telling people, right, they, they say, like, let, let me fix up my, 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 my mess. Let me fix everything up. And then once I'm ready, then I'll come to church, and then I'll serve God. But let me tell you, church, I don't know if you'll ever find perfection. You never will. But can we have the mentality of just accept me, God, or God, just let me accept your love, your unconditional love. It's all in our minds of how we view things, how we look at things. We sometimes think God's just going to be mad at us for all the mistakes we've made. So, so we, think, we think, oh man, I messed up. I, I can't go to God. But imagine if we just flipped it. Oh man, instead of saying, oh man, I messed up. I, I can't go to God. And we decide to say, oh man, I messed up. Let me go to God. It just changes everything. It's just the way, how you say it. And I think God's not looking at us mad and angry from heaven saying, ah, Maryland, so you guys are horrible. I'm so, no, it's unconditional. So what is God's love? God's love is unconditional. Here we go, two. God's love is sacrificial. He gave his one and only son. 
So that whoever believes in him shall not perish. He sacrificed his one and only son. He sacrificed his all for us, for you and I. So God's love is sacrificial. The third one is God's love is personable. God didn't just say, well, I'm going to make this sacrifice for you guys. It has nothing to do with me. No, he, he made it personal. Out of my own. Whatever I did, I, I'm giving it to you. It's personable. It's, it, it, it's more direct. It's saying, you know what? For you, I died. And we have to learn to accept that. Also, God's love is acceptable. I think sometimes we just aren't willing to accept it. Right? A, a while ago, I, I shared a little bit of just God's grace and, and how we should just accept it. It's like Christmas morning with my kids. They don't wake up and say, thank you for this gift, Papa, but I, I'm going to work hard for it. And then once I work for it, once I start doing my chores, once I do good in school, then I'll take this gift. As a parent, I'm like, no way, just it's yours. You don't have to do anything else. Just because you are my child and I love you, that gift is automatically yours. And that's the way God looks at you guys. He looks at us. Just accept my grace. Just accept my love. You don't have to get right now. I think in the process, he doesn't want us to stay in our sin either. He doesn't want us just to stay, yeah, I accept it. Cool, now I get to turn up and do whatever I want. No, no, no. I, I think God's love allows us to start wanting. It's his love that leads us to repentance. As you love someone, you begin to see what they like as well. And you're like, well, you know, my wife doesn't appreciate it when I leave all the dirty dishes. You know what I mean? And, and it's her love that allows me to start saying, you know what, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can. And then sooner or later, I'm over here buying a brand new dishwasher so I wouldn't have to do it, right? No, no, no. I, I'm doing what, what she loves. I think that's the same way with God. He's just waiting for us to accept. And then God's love is accessible. I think God, God's love is for anyone. God, God's, the, the awesome thing about God is, is that you don't have to be, it, it don't matter if you're rich or you're poor, your color, skin, doesn't matter. It, it's for anyone and everyone if you're willing to accept his love. I love what 1 John 4, 9, and 12 says. And it says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. I love this. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. We love because he first loved us. You didn't love God. He loved you first. It's not what you bring to the table. It's because he already loved you and accepted you into the table. I, I tell people all the time, especially in our team as we serve, is it, sometimes like, man, I don't feel like I, I, I'm good enough. I don't feel like I know what I'm doing to serve. I don't feel right. And I say this, if God brought you to the table, then just eat. Like, don't question it. Like, if it's like your, your, your parents, your household. If someone says, hey, come on over to eat. You're like, oh, I don't know if I deserve to eat. No, what do you do? You just eat. No matter what you eat, if God has brought you to this place to serve, if God has brought you to this house to call home, then just won't you embrace his love? Won't you just say, God, I'm going to eat, right? Dallas Cowboy fans, we're going to eat. Just eat and allow God to love you. And I think once we embrace that, then we're able to love others in a better way. Because in reality, you can't give what you don't receive. You can't give what you don't receive. So in other words, I can't love my neighbor, I can't love uh, my friends if I haven't even embraced God's love. There's an old saying that says, what's down in the well comes up in the bucket. You want to love people? You want to love your neighbor? Then learn to embrace God's love. Are you with me, church? Can we be better? Can, can we do life with people and learn to love them where they're at. Here's a few secrets that we have and want to share with you. 
The secret of love is being loved by God. You want to know the game plan? You want to know the password? You want to understand love? Then learn to be loved by God. And I know it might be hard for some. You're like, man, I, it feels weird. Like, what do you mean I just accept this love? I have to do something. I have to work hard. I have to keep going. No, you don't. God loves you. That's what it is. He loves you. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what you've heard. I don't know where you, you've learned. But, but God loves you and just accept it. And with time, he'll begin to move in you. He'll begin to change you. You begin to love people a different way. You begin to want to say, you know what? I want to get connected at church. You know what? I want to attend a life group. I want to serve because it's God's love that just draws us near him. One of the, 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 the coolest scriptures we have, obviously, that is very, very famous. And most people hear it in wedding days. You know, if you got married uh, and someone married you, more than likely, you've probably heard 1 Corinthians 13. Right? It talks about love, the love chapter, right? Here we go. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Amen. We need that. We really do. I need that. God is working in me. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves love. In other words, God is love, so love never fails. God never fails. If we believe God is love, then we know these are the characteristics of God. And God is calling us as children of God to do this. If I can get the keys and the band up here really quick, I'm going to close right now. I want to remind you of all that God has for you and all the love that he has. And, and, and sometimes it, I don't have words to express, and, and only some of us know. I, I can't tell you all that God loves, but I just know he loves me, and I know that he loves you. God is after your heart. He wants to love you. And I believe as, as we embrace God's love, we're able to show God's love. Here's another secret. The secret of love is, is showing God's love to others. And I get it. We got some weird people. There's some crazy people. I get it, right? We're, we're all familiar with it. There, there's going to be some people, maybe you're the crazy people, and that's okay. But God wants to love you. And, and in return, hopefully we can love others. Because the secret of love is showing God's love to others. And showing God's uncommon love. Right? It's a different type of love. Here's five things that I would love for you to put into practice this week. Five things that, that I hope you can take and put them into practice. And it doesn't have to be all five. Choose one this week. For the next five weeks, you have homework. And hopefully you can just take one week at a time. Sometimes we think, man, I'm going to accomplish this all tomorrow. No, you're not. You may not. I mean, you may, but, but can you just focus on one thing this week? And here's five different things that you can do. How do we show God's uncommon love? Number one is we say it. I know this is hard for some. It might be difficult for you to say, I love you to someone. But we have to say it. There's power when you tell someone you love them. I've yet to meet someone that says, oh, I hate it when they say I love you. You know what I mean? Like everyone loves to hear it. Who doesn't want to hear it? And if you like to hear it, then maybe you should say it also. Especially in the relationships you have around you the culture we have here at Lifehouse with our leaders and our pastoral staff is we want to make sure uh, it's like a bank account. Is there more deposits in someone's life? More words of, hey, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm thankful for you. Deposits in the bank or is it all withdrawals? Hey, I need you to show up here on Sunday at 6.30. I need you to do this. I need you to, you're going to feel like, bro, what you have, your, your balance is negative. 
Can we have in relationships just more deposits than withdrawals? This week, can you just tell the people around you that you love them? It can be your, your spouse. It can be your, 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 your mom, your dad, whoever it is. But show God's love. I love you. I'm thankful for you. People need to hear it. You probably want to hear it. Yes, we know God loves us, but it's, there's power, something powerful when we say it. Second two is, why don't you write it? Maybe you have to write a letter to someone. You write them down and you tell them, I love you. Maybe you can write in a text message, right? Just text someone, say, I love you. You, know, you don't even have to say, I love you. You can just do the emojis. Anybody down with emojis, right? The hard eyes, there it is. Hard eyes, do like 10 rows of just hard eyes or hearts, whatever it may be. But can we show and demonstrate God's love? Write it down. Tell someone you love them. Number three is give it. Maybe there's a gift you got to buy for someone. And I know we're all busy. We all got work and and we're, we're busy and we're working and we got to deal with deadlines and we're trying to move and maneuver our way through life. But can you tell someone, you know what? Here, I got you this hot Cheeto, bag of hot Cheetos. But check this. I was busy. I was on a mission. I had other things to do. But you were so important to me that I decided to stop at the store and think about you and say, I love you. So here you go, a bag of hot Cheetos. Maybe for some of you ballers, you guys can do more. That's okay. You know, I just want to start small. Right? Hot Cheetos is where we're at. But can we give it a small gift? Give it as we show God's love. Four, forgive. For some, this might be the hardest one. To be able to forgive someone that, that may have hurt you. To forgive someone who, who maybe hasn't treated you the best. To forgive someone because they've made some bad choices. But we're, 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 we're following the method of God. And God forgives us. God doesn't keep no records of wrong. God doesn't have hatred. If we are exemplifying God's love, then we have to be able to forgive. Forgive it. And then lastly, can we live it? Can we just live with love? I love coming to Life House and seeing all you guys as we're having a great time. And, and you can feel people love each other here. You can feel that God's doing something. So in your life, in your area, with the people around you that you have influence over. Because let me tell you, we all have influence. For some of you have influence over thousands, some of you over hundreds. Some of you over 10, some of you over one, but we all have the ability to be an influence to someone. And can we influence them to continue to love? William Shakespeare says this. He says, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Life is short. Life is short. And if we're going to say it, write it, give it, forgive it, live it, however maybe you need to do that now. Now for some of you who don't like William Shakespeare, maybe you like Dr. Seuss a little better. He says this, sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Dr. Seuss got bars, huh? It's not just green eggs and ham. But sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Can we learn to love people as we embrace and accept God's love? And I think one of the things we, we want to demonstrate here as Life House is when you enter a life group, you begin to form relationships with people. You begin to start loving them wanting to be with him. And trust me, guys, life is better in groups. Life is better when you're doing it with people. Some of you in here, I, I've met you through a life group and we're friends and we're closer now because you said yes to a life group. 
you may not realize, but your best friend might be here and you don't even know. Someone who's going to walk with you, who's going to encourage you, who's going to challenge you. Re really quick, I, I know I'm going a little over, but there's a story in the Bible, right, of, of Jesus healing the paralyzed man. And, and I wish I could really go through with it, but, but the story goes like this. Jesus is speaking at a house and it is full. That house is packed out. It's so full inside that on the way through the door, you can't even get in because people are outside, right? So imagine this. There's a house. Jesus is in there. Um, and he has people all in the house sitting on the floors, standing up. Outside, you can't even get in so because it's so packed, right? And then there's a group of four men who come. And they have a man who's paralyzed, cannot walk. And they are carrying him. And they see, man, it... We can't get in. Like, it's, there's so many people here. I cannot get in. What else do I do, right? Most of us be like, all right, we're good. I guess we can't do it. We got to have faith, right? No, these guys decide to say, you know what? Let me think of a way to get in. Oh, the roof is there. Let me try that. Not common. It's uncommon. Nobody wants to go through the roof, especially those of us who are scared of heights, right? I love you, bro, but I'm not getting up there. You know what I mean? But it's uncommon. They carry him up to the roof. Now imagine Jesus is speaking, kind of like I'm speaking here, and all of a sudden we start hearing something shake up there. It's not like it's a huge house, right? You can hear the step, especially four men carrying someone. It's a lot of weight up there. They hear it. Imagine us, right? We get distracted by uh, kids crying, but imagine that distraction. Someone's speaking, and you hear on the roof, they're, they're, they're moving around, they're doing, and these guys decide to say, you know what? Um, let's just break the roof. Let's just rip it up. Right? For those of you who may not be um, really well knowledge in Bible, but this is a story. Then they get in and they start to rip the roof open. Then oh, they probably put a rope around and say, you know what, let's just put them down. Why? Because they wanted to get that person there. The Bible doesn't say if they were friends, but man, you got to love someone to really carry them. Like there was no doubt they're friends, right? There had to be some sort of relationship there. And they got their friend and they got him through. Not only did they pick him up, Grown man, take them up and decide to break open someone's roof. I feel bad, right? For hopefully they had insurance. Um, but they ripped that roof open and they put them down. And Jesus is seeing this. Can you imagine everyone? Imagine there's a roof and we're like, what the heck is going on? And they open it. He gets there and Jesus says, your faith has healed you. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. People are, are like, whoa, this is awesome. I've never seen it. That's great. I love the fact that the friends took him. I don't know where you're at in life. Maybe you're the person that really needs to be healed by Jesus, the paralyzed man, some way, somehow, and there is something asking for your life. What I pray and I hope is that you can find four friends who are willing to carry you. And maybe you're not the person who's paralyzed or is going through some hard things, but can you be the friend who says, I'm going to pick my friend up and we're going to carry him there. And that's what a life group does. That was probably their life group, those five people. They did life together and they saw the need. They saw what they needed and they said, Jesus can heal them. Let's do all we can to be there. So I want to encourage you, church. Will you attend a life group? Will you go out there and look at the, the different booths that they have and just say, you know what, God, I, I'm, I'm going to try it. I, I want to have friendships like this. Maybe there's three or four of you together. Why don't you say, together, we're going to go after service. We'll all meet and we'll go do one. There's a life group for everyone. If, if we're honest with each other, there's not enough life groups to fill us all up. But I think and I know that life is better together. It's not done in, in rows. Life is done in circles. where We can meet with each other get to know each other, pray for each other, walk with each other, and encourage each other. Right there where you're at. Can we stand to our feet, church? I don't know where you're at in life. And maybe you, you, for the, you came for the first time and you're like, man, this Jesus you talk about, this God you talk about, I need to embrace that love. And it wouldn't be right if we didn't leave this place without the opportunity for you to accept Jesus in your life. That is the reason why we gather, church. We gather together to bring people to Jesus. 
So can we just close our eyes for a moment? If you've never, never in your life, this is the first time you're hearing and understanding God's love and you want to embrace it. If that is you, I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus in your life today. And we see the scripture. We know the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, not whoever gets everything right, gets everything going, has to be perfect, but whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Can you believe that God is your master? Can you believe that God's going to work in your life? So if you've never made that decision, with every head bowed, with every eyes closed, this is between you and God. Can you just lift your hand? I'd love to pray for you today. I'd love to be able to pray with you and encourage you. I see you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Come on, church. Can we give it up for God? Can we give a round of applause for all these people who choose to say yes? So with every head bowed, can we pray? Can you say this? God, forgive me. I recognize I am a sinner. And I believe that you can forgive my sins. Today, may I live for you and for you only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Amen and amen and amen. It's so powerful, so awesome when worship just touches your heart. And when the Word of God challenges you to just go to the next level in your walk, your faith, and communion with God. Thank you for being with us. Another presentation of Lifehouse to your house, and I pray to your heart. And now I pray that you pray about giving, about sowing to this ministry, this ministry that God has called to lead thousands of people to know God, grow together, and go serve. This ministry that is serving our communities, that are our ministry in the ways that, that we are serving the indigent, the lost, the broken, the homeless, and your gifts uh, make this ministry go farther. And I thank you for that. Also, would you pray about just joining our team of people that connect us with other people through the different platforms of social media, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram. Would you help us by following us uh, by clicking and then also by sharing these messages. Please do that. When you do that, you help propagate the gospel. And then lastly, uh, look at our Church Center app. Would you download this la Church Center app? Um, it is something that is a wonder. It is a, a technological wonder. It connects you to what LifeHouse is doing in our communities and how you can come and visit us or have others visit as well. So as you move forward, remember that God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Here at LifeHouse, we're for you. God is for you. And thank you for praying for this ministry. And thank you for being part of a ministry that God is using to lead thousands of people to know God, grow together, and go serve. God bless you. We'll see you next time.